According to Graham Hancock, it's hard to believe, but thousands of years ago in South America, there was an ancient civilization with an almost alien-like physical appearance that scientists cannot explain at all. And what's even more exciting is they left some incredible evidence that proved the existence of something extraterrestrial on Earth that we cannot explain. The Nazca civilization was one of the earliest civilizations located south from the Mesoamerica and is believed to have flourished from around 100 BC to 800 AD. And recently, scientists made a fascinating discovery of more than 140 new Nazca lines, which are enormous drawings etched into the desert landscape of southern Peru. And how did they get there? Are they related to extraterrestrial life? Well, new findings about this discovery stun scientists across the world, so let's explain everything. Graham Hancock is a British author and journalist, known for his alternative theories and hypotheses about ancient civilizations and archaeological sites. He has written extensively about the Nazca civilization. Hancock's book, Fingerprints of the Gods, explores various ancient civilizations, including the Nazca culture, and proposes alternative explanations for their achievements. One of his claims related to the Nazca civilization is that the Nazca lines, the famous geoglyphs etched into the desert floor, were created as a form of ancient aerial art meant to be appreciated from the sky. He suggests that the Nazca people had advanced knowledge of aerodynamics or access to some kind of aerial technology. Hancock's theories have been met with skepticism and criticism from many mainstream archaeologists and experts in the field. But who were these people? Well, the Nazca civilization thrived along the southern coast of Peru from 200 BC to 600 AD. They made their homes in the Nazca and nearby valleys, with important religious places like Coachi and urban centers like Ventela. This civilization is known for their unique pottery, textiles, and the famous Nazca lines, which are large drawings etched on the desert ground. The Nazca civilization coexisted with and outlasted the Paracas culture, and archaeologists have discovered Paracas sites beneath Nazca settlements. In terms of politics, the Nazca civilization was made up of a collection of chiefdoms that occasionally worked together for their common interests, rather than being a single unified state. In other words, as M. E. Mosley describes it, the Nazca people had individuality and cultural unity, but they did not possess large-scale or centralized power. This understanding is supported by the art and architecture of the Nazca, which shows similar themes across different settlements, yet there is a lack of consistent town planning or signs of central authority. The estimated maximum population of the Nazca civilization was around 25,000 people living in small villages built on terraced hillsides near irrigated floodplains. As the Nazca civilization grew, they expanded their influence into the Pisco Valley to the north and the Arquera Valley to the south, since llamas, alpacas, and vicuñas couldn't survive in the coastal areas where the Nazca lived. The fact that the Nazca textiles were made using their wool indicates that trade was established with cultures from the highlands. Moreover, Archaeologists have found Nazca mummies adorned with headdresses made from feathers of rainforest birds, which further demonstrates that goods were traded over long distances. The graves of the Nazca civilization, which were dug up to 4.5 meters deep and reached through a shaft, provide the most valuable collection of Nazca artifacts and offer insights into their culture. When people were buried, they were accompanied by exquisite pottery and textiles, without any clear distinction between male and female burials. The bodies of the deceased were mummified, carefully wrapped in textiles, and often placed in a seated position. Some skulls show intentional elongation, and we also have evidence that the Nazca people had tattoos. In the Nazca civilization, tombs, particularly those with shafts lined with mud bricks, could be reopened and additional mummies could be placed inside. This practice might suggest a form of ancestor worship. Alongside the mummies, caches of trophy heads were often found, some of which showed signs of trephination a surgical procedure to create a hole in the skull. These trophy heads were sometimes strung together on a cord, as depicted in pottery designs. Trophy heads were also frequently incorporated into textile designs, particularly in miniature form or as border decorations. The Nazca civilization, facing the challenges of a prolonged drought in the 5th century AD, grew weaker over time. They were eventually conquered by the Wari civilization, who adopted many of the artistic styles and practices of the Nazca. As a result, the Nazca settlements never regained their former prominence and remained at a provincial level of development. It is important to note that Ventela served as the main urban center of the Nazca civilization, occupying an area of more than 2 square kilometers (495 acres). It consisted of ceremonial mounds, walled courts, and terraced houses. 
In order to combat the constant risk of drought, the Nazca people constructed a vast system of underground aqueducts, galleries, and cisterns. This network was designed to secure a reliable water supply during the dry season and reduce evaporation. The aqueducts were accessed through impressive descending spiral ramps and were lined with smooth river stones known as cobbles. The term Nazca refers to both a geographical location and an ancient civilization in Peru. Nazca primarily refers to the Nazca Desert, a vast arid region located in southern Peru, which covers an area of approximately 50,000 square kilometers. The Nazca Civilization, also known as the Nazca Culture, was named after the Nazca Desert due to its association with the region. The ancient Nazca people inhabited the area from around 100 BCE to 800 CE during the early intermediate period of Andean history. They are renowned for their remarkable geoglyphs, large-scale designs created on the desert floor that are best viewed from an aerial perspective. And established around 100 BCE, Coachi was located on the southern bank of the Nazca River, about 50 kilometers inland. This site held great religious significance and served as the religious capital of the Nazca civilization. One of the reasons it was considered sacred was due to its reliable and constant water supply throughout the year. Interestingly, Karachi did not have any residential buildings, suggesting that it was not intended for habitation, but rather served as a place of pilgrimage and religious rituals. The sacred area of Karachi spans an impressive 11.5 square kilometers, 2,841 acres, and is adorned with approximately 40 large mounds made of adobe, cleverly utilizing natural hills. The tallest mount, known as the Great Temple, stands over 20 meters high. Each mound is accompanied by a plaza and is crowned with adobe walls. The largest plaza measures 47 by 75 meters. The central sacred area is enclosed by a low wall, only 40 centimeters high, and evidence of posts and post holes suggests the presence of canopies to provide shade for worshippers. Textile depictions also indicate that religious gatherings were associated with harvest festivals and piles of discarded waste, mainly consisting of pottery fragments, suggest ceremonial feasting took place at the site. Interestingly, this waste was intentionally left to become part of the mounds themselves. Consequently, the larger the mound, the more it was used in rituals. Some mounds also contained burials and large pots filled with exquisite textiles, which were offered as religious gifts. Nazca art, particularly on pottery, provides us with more insights into the religious ceremonies that took place at Karachi. Many of these scenes depict shamans, who were religious figures believed to communicate with nature spirits while under the influence of drugs. The purpose of these ceremonies was to seek blessings for a bountiful harvest. Music played a significant role in these rituals, as evidenced by numerous ceramic drums and panpipes found in archaeological sites. The primary deity of the Nazca people appears to have been the oculate being. This divine figure is often portrayed as a flying deity adorned with strings of trophy heads. In pottery and textile designs, the oculate being is commonly depicted in a horizontal position with flowing streamers emanating from their body. Notable features include large, wide open eyes and a snake-like tongue. Several aspects of Nazca culture indicate their beliefs in the afterlife. One such aspect is the presence of elaborate burials and grave goods. The Nazca people buried their deceased with various items, including pottery vessels, textiles, food, and even figurines. These offerings were likely intended to accompany the deceased in the afterlife or serve their needs in the spiritual realm. And it's interesting to point out that the Nazca civilization had their own sport, which was the use of ceremonial ball courts. These ball courts, similar to those found in other Mesoamerican civilizations such as the Maya and the Aztecs, indicate that some form of ball game of sport was played by the Nazca people. However, the specific rules, rituals, and significance of their ball game remain largely unknown. During its existence, several other fascinating civilizations emerged and flourished in different parts of the world. These contemporaneous societies, though geographically distant from the Nazca culture, contributed to the tapestry of human history through their unique advancements, cultural expressions, and historical significance. In Central America, the Maya civilization was in full swing during the Nazca period. The Maya people, inhabiting the lush rainforests of present-day Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador thrived from 2000 BC to 1500 AD. The Maya civilization was renowned for its remarkable advancements in astronomy, mathematics, and architecture. They developed a sophisticated calendar system that accurately predicted celestial events, such as eclipses, with remarkable precision. Maya cities, adorned with magnificent temples and palaces, 
exemplified their architectural prowess and urban planning skills. The mayor also excelled in the arts, leaving behind stunning murals, sculptures, and intricate jade carvings that showcase their deep cultural and religious beliefs. In the Eastern Mediterranean, the Roman Empire reached the height of its power during the Nazca civilization's existence. The Roman Empire, spanning from the British Isles to the Persian Gulf, was known for its vast territorial conquests, efficient governance, and remarkable engineering feats. During this period, Roman civilization experienced a surge in cultural, economic, and technological achievements. The Romans constructed iconic architectural marvels, such as the Colosseum, aqueducts, and expansive road networks, which facilitated trade and communication throughout the empire. The period also witnessed the zenith of Roman literature, with renowned authors like Virgil, Horace, and Ovid contributing significantly to Western literary tradition. In East Asia, the Han Dynasty of China coexisted with the Nazca civilization. The Han Dynasty, which lasted from 206 BC to 220 AD, is often considered a golden age in Chinese history. It witnessed advancements in various fields, including agriculture, metallurgy, and medicine. The Han Dynasty is particularly notable for its administrative reforms, which established a strong centralized government, standardized the legal system, and promoted education. During this time, Chinese arts and culture flourished, as evident in the exquisite bronzework, ceramic art, and the development of calligraphy. The Han Dynasty also saw the expansion of trade along the Silk Road, connecting China with distant regions and facilitating the exchange of goods and ideas. Also, archaeologists from Yamagata University in Japan have been conducting research on the Nazca Line since 2004, and their efforts have recently unveiled 143 previously unknown geoglyphs. Interestingly, one of these figures, which had remained hidden from human observation, was actually found with the help of artificial intelligence. The recently discovered geoglyphs are believed to have been made by the Nazca culture between 100 BC and 300 AD. Although the exact reason behind the creation of these large drawings is still a topic of debate, we do have an understanding of how they were made. According to the research team, all of these figures were formed by removing the dark stones that covered the land, revealing the white sand underneath. Some theories propose that the Nazca people designed these massive geoglyphs, some of which are hundreds of meters long, to be visible to the gods in the sky, while others suggest they might have served astronomical purposes. The recent study, led by the anthropologist and archaeologist Masoto Saki, involved examining detailed satellite images of the Nazca area and conducting on-site investigations. Through these methods, the team distinguished two primary categories of geoglyphs. The older carvings, known as Type B and estimated to be from 100 BC to 100 AD, are generally shorter than 50 meters. On the other hand, the slightly more recent figures, referred to as Type A, and believed to date from 100 AD to 300 AD, stretch over 50 meters in length. The team's remarkable discovery includes a geoglyph that measures more than 100 meters, making it the largest one found so far. According to the researchers, the bigger geoglyphs of type A, which frequently represent animals, were likely designed as ritual sites where ceremonies took place involving the intentional breaking of pottery vessels. On the other hand, the smaller Type B motifs were found along pathways and likely served as markers to guide travelers. They may have directed people towards the larger Type A ritual areas where individuals would gather for communal activities. Among the Type B geoglyphs, there were some remarkably small designs, with the tiniest one found measuring less than 5 meters. This adds to the challenge of spotting these faint lines, particularly when considering the vastness of the Nazca desert area. Regardless, it's quite a remarkable and poetic achievement. Our highly advanced thinking system, developed by present-day humans, has enabled the discovery of a symbolic system created by humans from ancient times, a system that still holds many mysteries. The enigmatic puzzle of the Nazca lines is far from being fully understood. However, the collaboration between the Yamagata team and IBM gives hope for further progress. They have expressed their commitment to continue working together to uncover more of these ancient geoglyphs in the future. It leaves us wondering what or who we might discover next as this fascinating journey continues. Moreover, the Nazca civilization was highly regarded for their exceptional artistic skills, particularly showcased in their finely crafted pottery. The pottery vessels are known for their thin walls and came in various shapes. Notable forms included double spouted containers with a single handle, as well as round vessels with a bulging shape and no flat bottom or base. Bowls, beakers, jars, effigy drums, and panpipes were also frequently produced. Additionally, 
the Nazca artisans created vessels shaped like human heads, likely influenced by their custom of collecting trophy heads after battles. The pottery vessels of the Nazca civilization were influenced by the designs of the earlier Paracas culture. These vessels were adorned with a slip, applied after firing, resulting in a wide range of vibrant patterns and depictions. The designs included gods, shamanic imagery, crustaceans, condors, monkeys, and mythical creatures, particularly felines. Over time, the Nazca developed their own distinct style, and their designs evolved from naturalistic to highly intricate and later to highly abstract forms. Often, the designs covering the entire vessel, creating a three-dimensional effect that wrapped around it. Some designs even told a story of depicted battle scenes. The contours of the vessel were cleverly utilized, with designs incorporating protruding parts such as a nose. The designs could overlap one another to create an illusion of space and depth. The Nazca people had a preference for colors like maroon, light purple, and blue-gray, although they used a wide range of colors overall, more than any other ancient Andean culture. Backgrounds of their artwork were typically in white, red, or black. They often outlined figures with black, which showcased their fondness for linear designs. The colors on their pottery were carefully polished to create a beautiful shine. Similar to many other cultures in South America, the Nazca people were skilled in various textile arts, including wool weaving, embroidery, and painting on cotton fabric. Thanks to the arid climate, many of these textiles have been remarkably preserved. They showcase the expertise of Nazca weavers, who employed a wide range of Andean techniques and utilized an impressive array of colors and shades to create intricate and detailed designs. The textile designs often featured figures, particularly depicting scenes of harvest with crops like maize and beans. Animals, resembling those found in the geoglyphs and pottery designs, were also commonly depicted. Excavations at Nazca settlements have uncovered looms, spindles, needles, cotton balls, and dye pots, all indicating the tools and materials used by the Nazca in their textile production. The Nazca artisans were skilled in working with gold. They would hammer the gold into thin sheets and then cut them into various shapes and silhouettes. The Nazca metal workers preferred to keep the surfaces smooth and shiny, so they added minimal decorative elements through repoussé work. One interesting item they crafted were masks that could be worn over the mouth, giving the wearer the appearance of having a golden beard and whiskers. They also created full face masks made of gold, along with hair plumes and ornaments for the nose and forehead. These gold masks transformed the wearer's face and evoked the transformative ceremonies conducted by the shamans, who were a popular subject in Nazca art. Also, it's interesting to point out that the ancient DNA analysis conducted at the Huaca Prieta site on the northern coast of Peru has provided significant insights into the early genetic history of the Americas. The remains examined at this site date back to around 9,000 years ago, making them among the earliest human DNA samples found in the Americas. The findings from the Huaca Prieta site have revealed the presence of early genetic components associating with the peopling of the Americas. This suggests that the genetic diversity of Native American populations has deep roots in the region, dating back to the earliest inhabitants of the continent. The Waka Prieta site itself is of great archaeological significance. It is a large pre-Columbian mound composed of multiple layers of human occupation. Excavations at the site have uncovered evidence of an ancient maritime culture that existed in the area around 15,000 years ago. The site contains remnants of early fishing communities who relied on marine resources for sustenance. Through the analysis of ancient DNA from the Waka Prieta site, researchers have been able to shed light on the genetic ancestry of these early inhabitants. The findings suggest that the populations in this region were connected to the initial waves of human migration into the Americas, possibly originating from Siberia and crossing the Bering Land Bridge during the last ice age. The presence of early genetic components at Waka Prieta aligns with other genetic studies that have revealed a shared ancestry among Native American populations. This includes the presence of a distinctive genetic marker known as haplogroup Q, which is found at high frequencies among indigenous populations across the Americas. The ancient DNA analysis from Waka Prieta contributes to our understanding of the deep ancestral connections between ancient populations in the Americas. It supports the hypothesis that the peopling of the Americas involved multiple waves of migration over thousands of years, ultimately leading to the rich genetic diversity observed among Native American populations today. Continued research and analysis of ancient DNA from sites like Waka Prieta and others in Peru and throughout the Americas 
will undoubtedly provide further insights into the complex and fascinating story of human settlement and migration into the ancient past. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell 